Hey everybody! Welcome back after the long weekend. Did you have a good fourth? Yes, very busy. Um, I actually moved this weekend. You know? Oh wow! <laughs> Crazy. So. so today we're talking summer trends and if you guys have been paying any attention, you've probably seen flamingos are everywhere this year. You never know what animal is going to trend, I right? know. <laughs> Every summer I feel like it's something a little different. Yeah, so it's flamingos this year. I'm not complaining because I think they're so cute. But Claudia sort of has a reputation for making things out of the pom-pom maker and yes. pom-poms. <laughs> so you've actually figured out how to do flamingos yes. with the pom-pom maker. And you're going to show that to us yeah, today? Yeah, I'm going to show you... Um, I'll, first of all, I'm going to show you how to use the pom-pom maker. So if anybody isn't really familiar with what a pom-pom maker is, um, I'll show you how easy and why it's so addicting to then make all these different animals out of it because it's just a very simple uh, thing that looks intimidating, but it is definitely not, and it's a lot of fun to work with. So Very cool. So we have Emily, actually, that will be linking to the products that you're using in the comments as Blitzy, and I'm, I'll, I'll sneak over and look at the comments, too. So let us know what trends you're loving this summer. Make sure you participate so we can uh, kind of chat back with you. So yes. go ahead. All right. So um, as you can tell, this flamingo I made using a small pom-pom maker and then an extra small pom-pom maker, but you can really make this flamingo any size. We have a variety of sizes of pom-pom makers if you look on our site, um, but I'm going to show you how to do the one that is approximately this size. So you're going to take, so this is a pom-pom maker, and it looks like this, and it has these little arms that open up on either side, and it actually pulls apart like that. So you want to get started, you're going to open one side, and this is the extra small one, so it's got a pretty small um, center piece there, but you want to just wrap your yarn around, and this is kind of, uh, this is just a much easier way of keeping your pom-poms symmetrical and even, um, I know the old school way I used to do it as well was with the cardboard. But this is just great for consistency and they look perfect every time. So you're going to wrap it like so until the pom-pom maker is full. So you'll see how it's kind of even at the top now. And you want to end, you want to finish your wrapping on the outside so that when you close it like that, you're just going to flip it, open the other side, and continue wrapping. So it's same, same strand of yarn. You're just continuing the wrapping process on the other side. I know every time that we use this tool, people say, oh, you can just use cardboard. Yes. And that's so true, but for me, I like that this kind of guides you through the process. Yes. I know, especially if you're making a lot of them, you just kind of like go mindlessly with wrapping your yarn. And it's really sturdy. Um, plastic and it's nice and secure so you're, it's not going to warp on you. You're not going to have to make multiple cardboards, you know, to make up for some wear and tear there. So then you're just going to clip off that yarn and you're going to see that there is a little groove in the center here and that's where you kind of guide your scissors and you're going to snip all the way across. like so, and then you flip it and do the exact same thing on the other side. Like and once it's all snipped, then you're gonna take a small length of yarn and you're gonna see a little groove there and this is where you place this uh, strand of yarn and it's gonna secure your pom-pom around the center. So you're just gonna tie a double knot. And you'll see the yarn goes right through that little groove there. So you tie a double knot and then it's nice and secure around the center. And then you can actually just pop open these little arms again and you have your pom-pom. So. Brenda says she needs these pom-pom <coughs> makers in her life. Yes, they are wonderful. <laughs> the Blitzy girls would agree. Yes, so you can see that you get your little pom-pom, and then all you have to do is go back in with your scissors and just kind of trim off 
any of the little stray um, strands that might be a little longer. So this little one, I'm guessing, is going to be the head? Yes. So this little guy will be the head of the flamingo. And I agree, you need one of these in your life because when come holiday time, pom pom, <laughs> everything. You can decorate your tree with it. You can use it as gift toppers. You can make um, just like some foam garlands, a bunch of different stuff. Like this, we have we actually have decorated. Yes, we have our, our own space <laughs> has decorated. You can tell that we're addicted. There's pom poms everywhere, everywhere in this space. <laughs> Um, yeah, so this is the, the flamingo's head. And so then you, all you need is some uh, coordinating pipe cleaners in whatever colors you'd like. And I just cut one in half. Now the, these will be the legs. And then I cut this one in half, and this will be the actual um, beak and neck of it. So I just am going to twist this around my finger a little bit like that. And then you're actually going to just thread it through the flamingo. And you might lose a strand or two from the center just because you're threading the um, pipe cleaner through it. So like so. And then you can just start to curve the neck. You can see how easy it starts to take shape. And then for the beak, I just took a Sharpie and colored in with a black it's marker so, cute. so that you don't have to worry about using two colors of, sh of um, pipe cleaner. And then the little eyeball is just a bead. So you can just glue on a bead for the eyeball. And let's see. So um, then you just make um, another pom-pom with mm -hmm. a, a slightly larger size pom-pom. And I just freehand drew. And that's with a different tool though it's a bigger pom pom it's maker. a bigger pom pom maker yes so this is the itty bitty one here you'll see again how small it is and they just start to go up in size they come in lots of different yes. sizes so we used it for like these bigger ones back here i think we used the large pom pom exactly. uh, maker tool for that one so just depending on what you're making right for animals do you usually go with the small one um it really depends on the animal. I don't know if anybody saw the video I made of the bald eagles. Oh, yes. Um, but those I used slightly bigger sizes um, of pom-pom makers. But this was, I think, the first uh, kind of delicate animal that I made. So I used um, the smaller ones. But like I said, it, it, if you want to make it slightly bigger, yeah. you know. And I hung these as a garland. Like, I, I, if you watch the video, I strung them up as a garland. Just because it is pipe cleaners, and unless you want to glue this down on something, it's really not going to like stand on its own. Yeah. Um, but just some little pieces of felt that I cut here, and just stuck them on, and so it's just it. yarn. So you just need yarn. You need some felt, pipe cleaners, and um, I created this little like kneecap for the flamingo just by making a a simple knot in the center. That's pipe clever. I would have never <laughs> ever thought to do that. So then that's the little knee and and you you just <laughs> yeah. That's how you got that little shape. That's so funny and look at these little feet. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I just cut some a little felt feet and some and a little tail and um, the little wings. So that's great. And it's all hot glue. You so. know what I have found to be the case with making really anything with the pom-pom maker? It's all in the trimming. Yes. It's all, yes, everyone definitely. who makes pom-poms with these is like, well, how do Claudia's look so good? And I figured it out her secret. <laughs> it's yes. that she's really careful with trimming and gets really close and just makes it look nice and neat. And that's yes. the difference between a really good pom-pom and a messier. Yeah, messier. In whatever look you're going for. But we did some foxes um, a while back for fun with... Um, some yeah. uh, crafty we did a Facebook friends, live yes. like that. and that one, it looks like a fox because I literally just trimmed it into a triangle. You like cut a it triangle. Like a cone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like a little cone, so that created the face of, so yeah, if you go onto our YouTube, you can see all of the different, you can just search pom-pom, and I've made like, I've made birds, um, for the holidays I made some elf uh, ornaments, so it's really, the possibilities are endless. That's right, this. we also have a video that just walks you through the steps that she did, so you can replay this one, but we have one that's how to use the clover pom-pom maker in five minutes or less. And yes. Just wrap, wrap, wrap. It shows you how to do it. So 
Thank you guys so much yeah. for joining us. Thanks for the fun tutorial. Sure. We will see you guys tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye.